Hi and welcome to this new video. This video today I will be showing you guys how to enable the hypervisor on Windows 10. This is available on Windows 10 Pro Enterprise and Education Editions. Um, it is available on Home Editions uh, through some hacks uh, which you could easily find on Google if you do want to use those. Um, feel free. They aren't super supported. Um, if Microsoft ever does push out an update to Windows 10 that causes those to stop working, um, then all that work is going to be lost. But you could easily use other tools out there like VirtualBox uh, to run these VMs. And the steps are fairly similar. There's a few differences, uh, but mostly in the user interface. But I will we'll be covering Hypervisor um, we'll be going over how to turn it on, how to install your VM, and then just kind of getting to the point where we can log in and use the server. Because we're going to be using that server in a lot of other videos uh, that I'll be posting, especially the PowerShell tutorial videos, uh, once we start playing around with Active Directory and PowerShell remoting. So let's go ahead and let's start here. Um, so. The first thing to do to, is to turn on Hyper, Hypervisor or Hyper-V. Um, I already have it turned on on this computer here, but it's very easy to find. If you just go to your search bar at the bottom left and type in Hyper, um, on your screen, it'll show you just the Turn Windows feature on and off. You're going to want to click on that. And then in there, you're going to find a Hyper-V and it won't have a checkbox. You're just going to want to put the checkbox there, click OK. It's going to go through, I think on my computer, it took roughly about a minute or two. And then it requires a reboot. And then once you reboot, it's all there. And then you're going to be able to type in Hyper or Hyper-V. And then you're going to see your Hyper-V manager here. So if we go ahead and click on that, we see here that we have a Hyper-V manager and we see my desktop here. Um, let me just see if we can zoom in um, on here. Probably not super easy to see. Give me one moment and we're just going to zoom in. All right, we're back here. It should be a little bit bigger now for you guys. So what we're going to want to do here, so I already have a server turned off. But we're actually not even going to worry about that. We're going to be building a brand new one here. Um, so one of the first things that we need to do before building a virtual machine is we first need an ISO file. Now, we're going to be using Windows Server 2019 today. But I mean, you can install any type of ISO. It could be Ubuntu, Kali Linux, Ubuntu, um, Windows 10. You can install Windows 10 on top of Windows 10. Um, and have a virtualized environment there, which we will be doing as well. Uh, but that'll be a different video uh, once we get into those. So what we're going to do is if we actually open up um, your web browser of choice here, and if you just Google Windows Server 2019 ISO, you're going to see the first link is going to be a Microsoft uh, Try Windows Server 2019 on Microsoft Evaluation Center. If you actually click on that here, you can actually see that you can actually download for free um, an evaluation trial of 180 days. Um, after the 180 days, there's a few features that kind of run out, um, but it's really not that bad. Because I'm going to show you how to take a snapshot of your VM right after installing it. And then if ever the 180 days kind of runs out, you can always just revert back to the snapshot. There's really not that many things that you would lose if it does go past that date from my personal experience. Feel free to comment below if you've seen some loss of functionality after the 180 days. I personally have not. Um, but this really kind of lets you really download ISOs of 20, server 2016, uh, 2012 still. Um, so you could definitely play play around with these and just download them and set them up. So what we're first going to want to do back in our Hyper-V manager 
is we are actually going to want to click on new and we're going to click on new virtual machine here and then we're just going to click on next and then we're going to want to name the machine so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to name it test server 2019 and rt at the beginning for my initials you could really name this anything you want does not have an impact at all it's really just going to be the name that you see in your hypervisor. Now you're gonna get prompted for the choose the generation of this virtual machine. By default, I would just leave it on generation one, uh, just to, it's really the widely most supported. Uh, so you don't have to worry about, is my ISO gonna work on it? Am I gonna have issues if I ever switch computers or bring this virtual machine to another computer? Stick to generation one and you can avoid those problems. Now for the startup memory, I would usually recommend setting this to 2048, uh, which is going to be the equivalent of two gigs. Um, I wouldn't really recommend anything lower than that for a server OS. I mean, if you're installing Ubuntu, you could run it with one gig. Um, my machine here has 12 gigs of RAM, so two gigs is more than enough. I mean, if you have 32 gigs, feel free to bump this up to four or six. Um, I always use the dynamic memory. This way, if it ever needs more or needs less, your computer will actually dynamically allocate more memory or less memory to this virtual machine just to keep it running smoothly. Now for the networking option, for now, we are gonna keep it not connected. Um, we're actually going to go over all connecting all these machines together in a separate video. For now, really all we're doing is just really learning how to turn on Hyper-V, building a VM, and then installing Server 2019 on it. Now in this next screen here, it's going to ask us to create a virtual hard disk. For the majority of times, you really won't have to change anything here. For the size, I would recommend to keep it at 100. Um, you could make it bigger. If you have a huge hard drive, feel free to make it bigger. I don't really see the need of going over 100 for what we're going to be doing. Um, but again, depending on your requirements, you may want to make it bigger. Or smaller if you don't have a very big hard drive. I would at least recommend 50 gigs. Anything less than that, you might run into some problems, uh, but I'm gonna make it at 100. And then we are, have the installation option here. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna install an operating system from a bootable CD or DVD-ROM, and then we're gonna pick an image file. Now we are gonna go ahead and we are gonna pick our image file here, which I have in my documents under ISO file. I've downloaded that server 2019 core there. So let's go ahead and let's select that. And then we're gonna click on next. And it's just gonna give us a general overview. We're gonna click on finish. It's gonna go ahead and build the virtual machine. So now what we can do is we can actually right click on it and we're gonna hit start. And then we're gonna right click on it again and hit connect. And what this is going to do, this is going to bring up a little window here. And this is actually just going to bring us right into as if we are opening up our computer for the first time and going through the setup. Uh, so I'm just going to leave mine set to English and a United States keyboard. And we're going to hit install now. This is fairly standard if you've gotten a new computer lately. Uh, it's really almost the same steps as if you were running through a typical Windows 10 install. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just for the sake of YouTube videos um, and just showing you guys a nice experience here, we are gonna choose Windows Server 2019 standard desktop experience. We're gonna click on next. We're going to accept these license terms. 
And then we're going to go ahead and select custom install windows only advanced. And then we're going to click on, it should automatically select our 100 gig drive. And we are going to click on new here and we're going to click on apply. Now what this is going to do, this actually created a hard drive within our hard drive. So we are not going to wipe out our operating system on our computer. This actually created its own little basically a little container that we're going to be running a computer on. So this is really a computer inside of a computer. It has its own uh, MAC address. It will have its own IP address uh, once we connect it to a network. Um, so it's going to be really great, very safe. Oftentimes, um, cybersecurity experts will always recommend you don't know what a file is and you want to be safe if you open it on a virtual environment um, you are almost guaranteed to be safe as long as you don't open yourself up to vulnerabilities through your virtual machine by opening up different ports and different functionalities that could connect your virtual machine and your actual computer together um, you are really safe so let's go ahead and let's click on next here so this is going to do your typical Windows install. So we're just going to go ahead and we are going to skip past this boring part for you guys. I will see you when this install is complete. All right, so the install just completed here. And I'm actually going to show you guys what happens once the install is complete. You might run into this issue. I've ran into it a few times. Uh, so it's just restarting here. This is what I've noticed before. Um, when it restarts, it just doesn't seem to really work. So what I do is I right click on the virtual machine in my Hyper-V manager and I hit on settings. Oh, see, it always does this. So it always reboot and say, press any key to continue. It's just stuck in a loop, constantly trying to boot from that CD. So what I like to do is I like to right click on the server here, click on settings. And then in here, there's going to be a IDE controller one. It might have a different name, but you will see a DVD drive and you're gonna see your Windows server ISO here. Select that, put it to none, click apply and then okay. And then it should come back. It might come back eventually just by waiting a few times. I just tend not to have that much patience uh, when it comes to waiting for these type of things, probably. Um, but here you're going to pick your password. Now, the password for a server, uh, there is a minimum requirement. Um, I find that usually an uppercase, a lowercase, and a number or a symbol is usually enough. Um, so let me just put my password in here. This is not a password that I use for anything else. But here we go, let's put that in there. And then we can have this here. And now you could put that to a full screen. Now that we're in here, we can log in and we have our server inside of our virtual environment in our hypervisor. So it's just logging in here. It sometimes takes a little bit of time. And here we are, it does come up. So in here, 
you basically have everything that you would have on a standard server that would be a physical one. And you can turn it off, you can shut it down from here. Uh, you can also uh, save the state of the selected machine. And what we can do, it's called a checkpoint. So what this is, this will basically save everything that's currently on that machine on that machine at that time. And if for some reason you do something and let's say you completely bugger it up or mess it up, you can revert back to this checkpoint and everything that you will have done since then will be gone like it never happened. Um, so one of the examples that we can say here is let's bring our machine up here for a second. And what we're going to do is we're just going to close this, close this. We're just going to put this in a little window here, shrink this down. So now if we go ahead and we just, if we actually take a snapshot, a checkpoint, right here. So if we go ahead and hit checkpoints, it's creating the checkpoint. So here we have the checkpoint at 1018. So now if we go ahead and we see that we have nothing on the desktop, we go ahead and it's still initializing here. So let's create a new text document and let's pretend this text document is a virus here. So let's just save that. And then if we went ahead and we right clicked on here, now we could delete the checkpoint, delete the checkpoint subtree, which would delete everything underneath it as well. So we can see like this is where we are now. This was our checkpoint. This is the default checkpoint that hypervisor automatically creates for you when you create your server but we wanna go back to this one here. So we can go ahead and right click on it and then click apply. And then we can go, are you sure you want to apply the selected checkpoint? The virtual machine's current state will be lost. And then you can create a checkpoint where you are right now and then go back to the other checkpoint or you can just apply. In this case, we're just gonna click apply. In most cases, you're probably just gonna click apply because you're probably going back to that checkpoint something's messed up and not working. So we're going to click apply. And then we're going to click reconnect. Now it's just reconnecting to the server as if it was a couple minutes ago. And if we log in, we see that that file is not there. So that did work. Just the screen here so you guys can see there is nothing on the desktop anymore. So that checkpoint did work. So now that we have our hypervisor installed, we have our VM created with server 2019. We're gonna be using this in some of our tutorials next up. Um, especially when we start playing with Active Directory, like I said, or PowerShell Remoting, which we have a few of those tutorials coming up in our intermediate series. Uh, be sure to keep an eye on that. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next video.